cool. Awesome. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Chiropractic Student Podcast. Today we are joined by Nathan Chilton. Um, he joins us uh, from his home and uh, I'm up in Lincoln at the moment so I've just started my job up here and so we're pretty close by. Uh, Nathan, thank you so much for coming on to the show. My pleasure, Lewis. Thank you for having me. Cool. Um, it's nice and simple. Obviously, we're just going to try and get to know you, um, let all the students kind of understand your journey through chiropractic, a little bit about chiropractic school. And then obviously we're here for those juicy tips, resources and advice from a well-worked chiropractor. Um, so first of all, whereabouts did you study? How did you get into chiropractic? Kind of maybe talk us through a little bit about your journey through. So studied in AECC and graduated in 2012. So that's what, 10 years ago, makes me feel old. Um, didn't fall into chiropractic the, the exciting way of had an adjustment when I was a kid, felt amazing and that was it. I fell in love with the vitalistic side of chiropractic, quite the opposite. Um, I was playing basketball quite competitively from the ages of kind of 16 to mid twenties. 17, got some lower back pain, went to see a chiropractor who was amazing, but very, um, looking back now, very just manual therapy, used the adjustment with lots of other things, um, but got me up and running, managed to play basketball. So I used to see him routinely every kind of three months or so back then. Um, during this time, I was at college playing basketball, not really an academic back then. I've, I've kind of grown into being an academic. So back then, busy playing basketball, going out, getting drunk, doing things that a typical probably 17-year-old guy does. At the end of college, my grades weren't too good. And then everyone was going to university and I was thinking, hmm, what am I going to do now? So I enrolled at Derby University to do sports science. Um, kind of fumbled my way through that. And then halfway through that, I had kind of like a wake-up call of, what am I actually going to do? How am I going to be able to give, um, give back to, to the world that I'm living in? And then after a, an adjustment, I thought, actually, quite enjoy chiropractic, what, what I thought chiropractic was. Like at this point, I had no idea of, of the depth of what true chiropractic is and the effects it can have. So this was very much so on the premise of a manual therapist. I thought it was a bit like a physio. Um, but with the adjustments, with the pop and crack, had, I had good results. Grew up around spines, books about anatomy because mum was a sports masseuse. So had an interest. So applied and they said I needed to get a 2-1 because my A-levels weren't very good. Um, I was like, fair enough, put the work in. I was like 1% off a 2-1. So I got a 2-2 and they still let me in. So I believe it was meant to be. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into chiropractic, the, the college going in, never having any clue or idea about the vitalistic side of chiropractic and what actually true chiropractic is. Um, so went in very blind to that. And I was probably very blind to that throughout the majority of my academic year. It was kind of jumping through the hoops and trying to pass the exams to become, a, to become what I thought a chiropractor was and then kind of start helping people. Cool. Like, I think a lot of people actually end up going in that way. Um, it's really interesting. You, you have the all holy grail of I was adjusted and uh, God spoke to me and I felt innate run through me. And they're like, that very rarely happens. Um, I'm very similar. I sports therapy background. I wanted to do rehabilitation and then found my way through. And now changed into something else um, which is really cool so you say you started off with a very um, mechanistic biomechanical approach and were interested in that rehabilitation side of things so how have you changed through the course of your career where are you at now so first job was quite an eye-opener um, it was a guy in London with a very um, vitalistic approach and even at this point it was more the, the word well, wellness was used more than vitalistic I think back then or for me it was anyway um, and it opened me up to a different way of 
communicating what chiropractic was, what the adjustment is, what it isn't. And that was my first real introduction to the principles of chiropractic. Um, I can't even remember learning or being taught them back at AECC. There was a buzz about them. There were certain people in my year that were exploring the vitalistic side. But back then, it was kind of, kind of stubborn, very kind of one, one direction, not very open to, to other things. So like I said, it was getting the degree so I could then become what I thought a chiropractic was. Mm. So it was this first job that was the, the eye-opener. Having a, a mentor and a different perspective um, was, a big, was a big part to play. I was only there for a year, but I think that was, well, it was definitely a pivotal point in my chiropractic career. Um, but it was just scratching the surface of what chiropractic was. And then leaving there, having some idea, probably thinking that I knew more than I did, um, I tried to set up a practice on my, um, by myself back in, in Nottingham area, so not too far from kind of Lincoln and, and you guys. Um, and then that's when um, I had problems with my pelvis, which I'm still kind of having problems with now. Um, so that kind of stopped me opening that. So I had to take some time off work early on in, the, in, in my career, took about six months off. After that, I didn't feel ready to, to then open up my own place. So then I worked for a, a local place in Nottingham, again, very mechanicalistic. Um, this was more of a means to an end. It was close. I didn't have to drive far. So I was trying to practice what I thought chiropractic was in a building and an atmosphere with energy that was completely opposite so you can imagine how that felt um very incongruent made me more confused um and that's how i was probably for about two three four years i then um, met a girl moved up south and down south into another kind of building where i knew chiropractic was more than, than i was offering but under an umbrella of you kind of left to your own devices, but the, the undertone of this place is very pain-based, mechanicalistic. But I was left to my own device, so I could um, try my best, but if everyone's not on the same page, all the other chiropractors, the, the CAs at the time, it's very difficult um, to create an environment that is conducive for healing. Um, but even then, I still knew there was more to chiropractic, but I was probably at this point in my life I was really starting to discover myself um, and I think with chiropractic if you're practicing chiropractic as it should be it's all about connection um, connection between your brain your body but if you're not connected to yourself I think it's very difficult to one be your authentic self um, express what you are are trying to express to the world through whatever you're doing as a profession um, so the past five years has been a huge shift with doing a lot of healing of myself, which has then made me better able to heal others. And I think that's a big thing that you would never learn in AECC, because if you start talking like that, they'll probably think you're um, practicing magic or something. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But if, if you have got problems and you are not willing to, to look what needs changing within yourself and healing yourself, it's going to be very difficult for you to become an effective facilitator of healing, which is what chiropractor is. So I don't go, I might be going on a tangent here actually, but um, I'm like, so, wow, right now, that is brilliant. You just went off on one and it was really cool. Um, so you kind of found from what I'm getting from that, you you've moved about, obviously you've been in mechanistic, you've been in vitalistic, you've, kind of tested the waters in different areas but always known deep down kind of what you want to do um and known when you're in the right place in the wrong place doing the right thing or the wrong thing for you um and you really interestingly said there about obviously connecting with yourself so that you can connect with others and making sure you're i can't remember who said it but it's like be the best me for you and you for me so if you're the best yourself i will get the most best out of you um like you can be the better you for me I can't remember the exact yeah. saying but there's a cool saying about that and that and as soon as you said that I was like oh wow like I remember hearing that and I was like wow too like making sure that you are in a good place before you can 
help others is really pivotal. That's really cool. Um, oh, that's like a nice switch then, because how did you know? What was it that you knew deep down how you wanted to practice um, as you started going through through your career? Was it something to say, oh, I really like the philosophy of things um, and like innate and just that connection side of things, the vibration, the energy, or do you, was it more, I don't know what it was like, the science, the art, what, what was it that you felt really attracted to within chiropractic? So probably a combination of, of everything, of love science at school. Um, that was probably one of the subjects that I think the GCS I got a B in so that was a <laughs> one subject I enjoyed um love um doing things with my hands which obviously which is what the chiropractic adjustment is delivered with most of the time and then you've got philosophy which is something that I I probably dived into philosophy not the um chiropractic side of philosophy just philosophy in general and the different umbrellas that 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 is um which then made it easier for me to then start to digest the chiropractic philosophy. And it's what I liked about chiropractic philosophy is it's very actionable. Um, and people think philosophy is just about words, um, but it's not, it's about action. Um, and if you remove chiropractic away from those principles, it's very in tune with what I, what I believe life to be about. So you can almost live life off those principles, even if you're not a chiropractor. So it makes it very universal, universal, sorry, universal to us as a chiropractor, but also the people that we serve, if we can communicate um, a very simple level of what, what chiropractic is um, without overcomplicating things. So it was kind of everything coming together as well as the work I was doing on myself, being in tune with, with how energy um, is kind of everywhere and it is the most important thing that we can work with um, knowing that is, there is more than just what's happening in this moment there's this intelligence um, divine intelligence that we could call um, god or um, divine whatever feels comfortable for yourself that if you believe in that it, it fits very nicely in, with what chiropractic is um, so that intelligence and faith, the more, especially through this past year, I probably see it as faith um, and following a faith as such, which has also been very helpful um, with one that's going on with what is going on with my kind of healing process, but also getting ready for when I am able to come back and um, serve the community and adjust. I feel a lot more grounded, a lot more connected, a lot more present, which being present. The two most important things I'd probably say to, to a student becoming a chiropractor is one, think outside the box while you are studying. Yes, you need to jump through the hoops, but don't be afraid to, to broaden your horizons, ask questions, connect with other chiropractors that are already practice in a different way to you because I don't know one chiropractor that loves chiropractic that would not communicate to another chiropractor, especially a student asking questions. So other than that, practice being present with yourself um, and being able to communicate effectively Th those are the probably two most important things I know you haven't asked for a tip yet but they've just kind of they've just come in now but that those two things if you can be present with someone truly listen so not, not talking at them trying to sell them a care plan or explaining all the amazing things you can do by communicating it's probably best to listen more talk less um, and be present with that person um, be honest, you will build a practice, a very successful practice, quicker than you think, just by doing those few things, rather than um, keeping yourself busy trying to learn too many tools and do them ineffectively. Do the basics well, and that's that's where your starting point should be, I think. So being present, being honest, and think outside the box while you're a student, basically. <laughs> yeah and start start to communicate like communication obviously everyone says it it's, it's huge in the personal development space but it's a skill and it takes practice 
and it's not what people think communication isn't about using big fancy words describing things it's meeting someone where they are truly listening and being able to get that person to see your side of the story in a safe space without feeling put under pressure or without feeling wronged or made to feel right well i'm sure they'd like that if people are made to feel right but you, you know what i mean made made to feel safe basically um and that is something that that does take time um it's really up uh, i think there's like golden gems already coming up and i'm not even asked for anything yet it's brilliant you're giving without being asked so it's it's lovely um I completely agree Like I've not been in practice long like four or five months and I'm finding like even my process of initial consultation and report of findings and rapport with patients the more relaxed and open and honest and comfortable I am the more they trust you because it is you're not selling you're not a salesman yeah you're selling chiropractic but you're not you're selling a different lifestyle you're selling health um and they want it they're there for it it's if you oversell it it becomes a sales pitch they've already walked through your door they want it it's just now just showing them honestly what they what you can do um which is really exactly. cool right <laughs> this is brilliant like we've got so much cool stuff already so that's good i'm going to move on to some resource based stuff now so if you had to pick one book that you read and went, whoa, this shifted my thinking. It doesn't even have to be a chiropractic book. It can be anything. Um, if you had to pick one book, what would it have been that you read that shifted your oh, thinking? That's a difficult one. Um, there's many, many books. First one um, that came to your so mind. So the chiropractic one. So the chiropractic one, because it's in front of me now, chiropractic textbook by Stevenson mm -hmm. is, it should be read by every chiropractor it should be given in the first week of chiropractic college um that one um and i know you said one but two i'll, I'll give you two um because we're facilitators of he healing um there's a book by louise hay called you can heal your life um which is a pretty good book it looks at how mental patterns thoughts create dyshyphenies um, and are probably the main driving forces of um, dis hyphen ease and then onto disease within the body so that fits very nicely in with what we're trying to do as chiropractors and it just might help broaden your horizon and think out the box yes we talk about the kind of the three t's one of those is thoughts but it's, it's a, just another perspective on that um, and i think anything to do with healing any books to do with healing that appreciate that we are responsible for our own health um, and the main driving th force that can cause problems are ourselves and our thoughts which are the probably the biggest limitations that that we put on ourselves and that's one thing that i am trying my hardest to break the cycle i'm a big overthinker um, and i believe my my issues now yes lots of things happened in my past it's important not to be a victim and to take control but rewiring and changing a nervous system that has been patterned in that state for so long takes a lot of time a lot of time um, and healing in general so if you if I, I can relate to myself so when i'm talking to people that give me a history of yes they might have a shoulder niggle but why is that shoulder niggle there it's not just so, like a repetitive strain and injury what side of that body is it masculine is it feminine what emotional traumas have they had in their life that might manifest in certain patterns in the body so it kind of it kind of mind you get a, a huge perspective when that person is sitting in front of you if you try and take as much information and knowledge from all these books as you can as well as work on yourself you are better able to to listen for certain cues that you might have missed if i guarantee most people out of aecc college you're sat you're just looking for where does it hurt? Does it hurt when it moves? What have you done physically to cause that problem? You're missing 95% of things that are actually causing the problem. So the people, the problem, the thing that people come to you with as the problem is very often not the problem. That's why I've started to, to look through that lens is yes, they've got a shoulder problem, but is really that the problem? They've got a headache, 
is that really that the problem? And it just it just makes you a bit more open and able to listen rather than kind of that one track mind, which um, I was very one track mind leaving um, university, like I say, 10 years ago, which makes me feel incredibly old. That's really interesting. And I've read that Louise Hay book and it's really cool. And, and it's not like a proper book book as well, because it's got like different sections where there's like tables and it literally says like diabetes what do you need to do like it's really cool like it's one of those ref- like a reference book as well so 100% recommend that um I like I don't even want to comment on what you were saying actually because it was so pure and how you said it and nice and easy I think it's nice and easy to digest um are there any other like resources aside from books that you would recommend for either a student or a new grad or anything like that um it might have been a seminar or a conference that you went to that really opened your eyes or someone you spoke to anything like that um so i definitely recommend seminars um the only ones i've really been to are uca seminars which are amazing because you're surrounded by passionate chiropractors Mm. and all on the same journey always wanting to learn even if someone's been a chiropractor for two years or 20 years um so i would attend seminars and it probably wouldn't hurt as a student going to both so you could have an idea of both kind of bca uca see what works works for you i can't really comment on the bca conferences but it's always good and it's always healthy to have a dialogue um, and be able to discuss and debate without getting your backs up or being to left wing or right wing as we know what's happened in in the past two years not having a dialogue is a very unhealthy way of managing uh, managing anything in life so to have access to seminars very important and then once you find which seminars make you make you tick literally no pun intended um you you, sh- you should go to as many as you can surround yourself with those people with those energy um Online resources, something that I've found really useful in the past two, three years is um, Kairos Training Culture, um, Brett Jones, that kind of stuff is really good. I did his 10 week course in 2020, um, which was amazing. Really, really good. So I'd recommend. Meditate one. So that's the, the 12 week course no it's actually like a 10-week module and it covers artistry philosophy science um oh, business. Is that the kairos university thing yeah yeah oh, so cool. that is amazing i recommend highly recommend any or any chiropractor doing it but particularly a student and what you have to remember when you're a student yes you feel like you are super busy but you have more time than you think um so probably a, Yes, you have to jump through the hoops and become a chiropractor. But if you've got time to do something like that before you go out into the the real world, that would stand you in good stead because it's a well-rounded course that says it's not just it doesn't just cover, um, say, artistry. So technique business, for example, because I left college not having a clue about how to run a chiropractic business Um, because some people want to leave college and, and start a business straight away. Um, which which is great for some people and if that is something you want to do i would i would recommend something like that because it does open your eyes to to what it takes because yes chiropractic is amazing it's fun but there are lots of things behind the scenes of running a successful business that aren't too fun like setting up correct systems training um a whole host of things that need to be running smoothly for you to be successful which you leave college not having a clue about there you go you heard it from a guy who runs his own clinic so do it (laughs) very beneficial get prepared um all right so let's say you were able to see nathan in year one aecc and you are able to look at him and say here is the most golden sentence of advice that you will receive from anyone in your life (laughs) what would you say to him and why it can be specific to I would you, say, or it can be like a general, a general advice. To myself. 
I'll, I'll say it to myself and then it might help others. So what I would say is try not to compare yourself to others too much. Focus on your talents, your gifts. Um, there's no need for you to, to, to fit into society. You, we all have our own tribe. There's enough people out there to, to be split between everyone. Um, because it's that comparison that hinders and can destroy your own creativity um, and start for me specifically learn about chiropractic sooner the actual philosophy the principles and start to put that uncomfortable work of healing past traumas start a decade earlier um, but yeah other than that just be yourself be consistent um, do things and be around people that makes your heart and soul smile oh that gave me goosebumps that was so <laughs> lovely that's really nice and I think ever, like you said yeah you'd say that to Nathan but I think everyone can take that on board and it's it's so important for people to understand that like not not comparing and understanding chiropractic for what it is outside of university like this is why I did it because I didn't know what chiropractic was until about six months ago when I just graduated um and now I'm just like why is chiropractic schools why are chiropractic schools not teaching this or telling us about this because I'm having so much more fun now and getting better results and just life is better and easier now that I actually understand chiropractic and I enjoy chiropractic now whereas before it was just my uni course I turn up fall asleep at the back of the lecture theater like <laughs> it's yeah. it's so much better more it's a shame yeah it's a huge shame that obviously this you've got medical paradigm and you've got prevention and wellness paradigm um when I'm saying that another good book worth reading is James L. Chest, um, James Chestnut, Wellness and Prevention Paradigm, good book. Um, it's like the college is trying to fit a square peg through a circular hole um, rather than be its, its separate identity, um, which if you then imagine it's going to produce students with that, with that mindset of not actually maybe knowing exactly what they want to do or, or who they want to be. Um, it adds more confusion to yeah. the to the pot. Yeah, I completely agree. I was confused about the whole of school until yeah. I started talking to people who were already chiropractors, and then it kind of started making sense. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, I love that chiropractic. Not, yeah, so interesting, amazing. Um, the you've given us so much information and so much insight into chiropractic and like different routes to go, like. I think all of the advice and resources that you've given, um, absolutely wonderful. If people want to uh, find out a little bit more about you, um, follow your health journey you mentioned earlier, um, how can they do so? Uh, what's the best way to do it? And if they want to contact you as well. So Instagram is Nathan J Chilton. And that's from my personal instagram um mm -hmm. i post quite a bit um, and that's got the link to my clinics chiropractic um instagram and then there's a youtube channel which is just nathan chilton which is documenting my health journey and um, but as well as that kind of going to start doing videos more about how to live live a healthy healthy life in general but at the minute it's quite targeted towards what's going on with my health at the present moment so cool and uh, I follow you and that's kind of how I found out about you and saw you at the UCA and I was like, oh yeah, this guy, I'm going to message him and get him on the podcast. Um, so here we are. And I'd recommend everyone just drop him a message, pick his brains as much as you can. Same as everyone else. Um, just try and get the most out of every chiropractor, especially those who come on the show. They're more than help and happy to like help out as much as they can. More than happy. Amazing. Any other, anything else you'd like to say or are we all sorted? Is that any parting gifts? <laughs> um, I think that's it. I yeah, think. I we went pretty talk, heavy. Probably could talk for hours, but yeah. yeah. Um, it's cool. The, the main thing is, is anyone has any questions or anything, more than happy to help. 
at the moment I've got more time than usual mm-hmm. with me being not adjusting um, so feel free to, to give me a message um, give me a DM if I can help more than happy there's actually I've started a group on Facebook a private Facebook group that is aimed towards all chiropractors but particularly students or new grads um it's only been going for a month or two it's called the practice hub i post something once a week at the minute not too sure how it's going to grow or evolve but it just felt right um it came to me one day after meditating so i've started that there hopefully to grow a community like-minded people safe space where everyone can communicate any questions um they feel able to ask and hopefully um, get some insight or answers to those questions so yeah the practice hub um, on facebook uh, the best way to do it is just maybe dm you on instagram or, or facebook and then yeah, get the, access to it <clears throat> the link to that is actually in the, link, um, in the bio on my instagram oh perfect so you go, go go into that and it goes straight to it i think you're a member of the group actually yeah i think i've joined yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't worry um cool i'm gonna pop all these links uh, down below in the description as well so if anyone wants to just click on them it'll be super easy pretty much thank you so much for giving your time to give back to the profession. Like I know you're giving so much at the moment. Um, I really appreciate you giving your time, especially on this is being recorded on the Easter holiday weekend. So I really appreciate that. Um, uh, just giving us and giving back to the students and those in need. So thank you so much for coming on the show, Nathan. My pleasure, Lewis. Thank you for having me. Thank you.